This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. And welcome in, folks, to another edition of Open Mic Night. I am your host, Noah Saluki. And on today's episode, a couple weeks ago, the Lions revealed their 2022 schedule. I'm going to break it down and talk. I'm not going to go game by game, but I, I want to talk about some of some of the opponents on the list uh, and you know what it means for the Lions in this 2022 season. Also, we have some interesting Joel Zumaya comments, the former Tigers pitcher. Uh, he said stuff about Alavila and, and the current organization uh, uh, right now with the Tigers. Uh, I kind of want to discuss those comments and see if you know any of them are, are really relevant to what's happening right now with uh, our Detroit baseball team. Uh, so really happy to get back into it. I had to take a little bit of a break last week. Um, wasn't really feeling too well. And uh, I was back home in Detroit as well for uh, for for a week, and then um, you know I'm back in Cleveland now for, uh, for the summer. I have a big announcement, by the way, uh, to make next week uh, about uh, about what I'm going to be doing this summer as well. So uh, stay tuned uh, till next week. Can't wait to um, reveal to you guys uh, what uh, I'm going to be doing this summer. I think it's a really really awesome uh, opportunity, and uh, I'm really really looking forward to it uh, as well. All right, so. As everyone knows, the number one news in Detroit is always Lions related. And, you know, the whole thing with the schedule reveal and all that stuff that teams are doing now, they're starting to make fun videos about, uh, you know, like who their opponents are. I just think it's it's really shows the power of the NFL and how literally a schedule release can be like primetime TV. It's it's incredible. Uh, So I want to start things off with uh, uh, the preseason. Uh, I know uh, preseason it's only three games now, but you know I always I always enjoy watching the preseason. Sometimes um, home against Atlanta to begin, on the road at Indianapolis, and then on the road at Pittsburgh, August twenty eighth. I'm looking forward to that Pittsburgh game because it's on the road, and you know Pittsburgh's only about two hours from Cleveland, so uh, I'll probably be making that trek as well, uh, going to Heinz Field, uh, beautiful stadium over there. On the banks of the Ohio River. Week one, Eagles at home. Week two, Washington at home as well. Uh, Week three, at Vikings in Minnesota. Week four, Seattle at home. Week five, Patriots on the road. Week six is the bye. Week seven, at the Dallas Cowboys. Week eight, Dolphins at home. Week nine, Packers at home. Week ten, Bears on the road, week 11, Giants on the road at MetLife Stadium, week 12, the big one, Thanksgiving, the one nationally televised game the Lions get this season, it's always guaranteed every year, against the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, week 13, Jaguars at home, week 14, Vikings at home, week 15, Jets on the road at MetLife, so the Lions will be going to MetLife Stadium twice. Week 16 at Panthers, week 17, uh, Bears at home, and then the Lions will end the 2022 campaign on the road, week 18, against the divisional rival Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field. Guys, I I, I mean, looking at this roster, and like I said before, we're not going to go into a whole deep dive of, you know, game by game. It's We're not even at training camp yet. I mean, we're barely even past OTAs and, and mini camps. We're not we're not going to be doing that discussion. But looking at some of these games, I I don't see why the Lions can't pick up at least six seven wins. I I, I don't. And you know I I know what people are going to say. Well, this is a three win team from last year. Blah blah blah. Guys, this team is going to be improved. I'm not saying they're going to the playoffs. I'm not saying they're going to win 10 plus games. I just, I really do think this team is going to be um, a lot more improved than they were last year. And I think that means Jared Goff is going to play better. I think that means DeAndre Swift and the, and the offensive line will, will, will gain more chemistry. And uh, I, I really think this could be a real breakout campaign for DeAndre Swift in this year three for him. Um, you know, obviously, I, I think an improved defense. Especially with Aiden Hutchinson on the line, you know, uh, Ali McNeil and uh, Anzarike, you know, those guys in year two, maybe maybe they develop a little bit more. Obviously, you know, you got some you got some of the other rookies, Pascal, 
I, I really, really think that this team is is going to win about six, seven, eight games somewhere in there, just based on my initial, you know, looking uh, at at this schedule here. And I know another topic uh, that has been really uh, that has come up a lot with this uh, with this Lions team is that they don't have any primetime games. Uh, the one nationally televised game they have is against the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving. Like I said, it's always guaranteed. Guys, I look as a fan. I am a little disappointed that there's no primetime games. I am. I like watching the Lions on Monday Night Football. I like watching them on Sunday Night Football. Thursday night would even be great, and especially now the NFL is starting to, you know, get a lot more Thursday night games. They're starting to make more of a big deal, a lot more, you know, marquee matchups uh, because they're they're switching over to Amazon uh, for their Thursday night games. They're going to be Amazon Prime is going to stream them and everything. You know, Al Michaels they signed that big deal. Uh, broadcasts are going to be shifted around. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman on ESPN now, all that. But I, um, but part of me also says, who cares? We knew this team was we had three wins. The NFL, they don't put bad teams on prime time. It's been like that for years. Now, I know it's it's entertaining. I, I, I get this team could be entertaining with Dan Campbell and all that. Guys, you got to remember something, too. Okay, obviously the one national game every year is Thanksgiving. But you got to remember hard knocks. The Lions are going to be on hard knocks. The nation is going to see the Lions this season. They're going to see them. On you know on, on HBO and and see their personalities. It's not like it's not like the Lions are entering some desert right now of of no playoff or of no primetime games or, or or like no national exposure. The Lions are getting plenty of national exposure right now. Plenty. I gotta say this is the most hyped up in ten plus years I've seen. The Lions, you know, from not only people in Detroit but nationally, this is the most. This is one of the most hyped up off seasons I've ever seen with this team. And what are you going to say? Oh, three wins. It's a results business. I get it. I know the NFL is a results business, but guys, remember they were starting from ground zero. Stafford traded away. New GM and Brad Holmes, new head coach Dan Campbell. New quarterback for the first time in 12 seasons. You know, you, you have, you know, sort of this, and they're basically rebuilding from ground zero. People like sort of like an underdog story. And I think the Lions are sort of like these big underdogs. You know, they 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 never quit when, Dan, you know, with Dan Campbell last year. Even though they only won three games, there was no letting up. There, You didn't see that. You know, and I think, I think, America and I think football fans like that. And plus, it helps that they have a very charismatic coach in in Dan Campbell, a couple other great personalities on the team. I, I really think this is going to be a great hard knocks. But I also think that this is why America is falling in love with the Lions. I just really feel like they understand that they're sort of they're trying to just turn the corner. We've seen sports teams in the last 10, 20 years who haven't won anything, succeed. Look at the Red Sox. I, I, I'm using other sports as examples. Look at the Red Sox. They had an 86-year curse. They won in 2004. They've been winners ever since. The Cubs, they won in 2016 after a 108-year drought or whatever it was. The Eagles, they won a Super Bowl. They had not won a championship since 1960. There's teams that have... You know, in just in professional sports that have broken these droughts, these massive droughts, and I really, really think that the. I mean, you look at the Bengals; they they had all their droughts taken away in the you know playoffs this year with with uh, uh, Joe Burrow. I just think that more and more sports teams are starting to break their curses. At least, like I said, in the last 10, 20 years, I think America is kind of rooting for the Lions to be the next, and I like that. I like how there's a lot of buzz with this team because for years there hasn't that's and there's and I know there's fans that have quit on this team. And they say that, oh, I, I've heard it all before. I've heard it all. But I really, really think that this this Lions team could be very, very exciting to watch this season. And I don't I don't care if they're not making the playoffs or anything, but I just think that this is gonna give 
the city of Detroit, you know, a lot more energy right now, um, you know, than, than at, because obviously we know, we know that the Pistons aren't doing too well. We know that the Red Wings, I know they just fired Jeff Blaschel. We'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. We know the Tigers, we're going to get to the Tigers, but I really think this season, uh, the most hype will be around the Lions. And uh, I really think deservedly so. I trust, of all the GMs in this city, other than maybe, maybe Iserman, but I, I trust Brad Holmes. I do. In Brad Holmes, I trust. I trust him to gut this roster. I trust Dan Campbell to coach these guys up. I, I really, as a fan, I have, I'm have i putting a lot of trust in the Lions because this is... I know what you're going to say. Oh, we've heard it all before. It's different every year. You know, no, but I really think, and look, I've I've really only officially been a Lions fan since 2009, I would say, when Matthew Stafford was a rookie. But at least in my, I guess, lifetime of being a fan since 2009, I've never seen this much hype for this team. Positive hype. Positivity around this team. And I think a lot of that has to do with Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, the culture that they want to create. I think Sheila is a little bit more open than her parents were. So I'm willing to give these guys a shot. And I think if every single year the Lions improve, this team's going to be a playoff team, and they're going to start winning playoff games. And I think this year, too, is going to be the biggest year. It's going to be the biggest year for, for Jared Goff. We know that he's, you know, he. This is his last year of his two-year deal. Will he perform? He's, he's gonna, he's gonna have to if he wants to earn a long-term, uh, you know, a longer, uh, long-term extension contract. DJ Chark on the one-year deal, seeing if he can, you know, be a part of this team for a long time. And this is, this is gonna be a little bit of a make-or-break year, I think, for a lot of, a lot of Lions. But uh, I think the schedule is, is really. Um, you know, at least favorable for for some more wins for the Lions this season. That's for sure. All right, before we close out uh, the podcast, I want to talk about Joel Zumaya. Um, you know, the former Tigers pitcher, uh, very good uh, in the two thousands, uh, but then he blew out his arm, I believe, in the late two thousands, early two thousands tens. Um, you know, and he was no longer a force after that. Um, but you know. Uh, a, a guy uh, talk about a pitcher and like a player who really embraced the city of Detroit and its fans uh, during his time in, in the old English D that's definitely uh, Joel Zumaya uh, I want to read you some of his comments that he took to Instagram uh, his Instagram account the other day and um, I want to talk a little bit about it because I think I think I think there's some interesting um, there's some interesting comments that he had so here we go he said on Instagram is there any other true Detroit Tiger fan as disappointed as I am on how this season is going for the team? Well, I, Joel Zumaya, number 54, former Detroit Tiger, all in capital letters, truly am disgusted, disappointed, just flat out upset on how this organization has let itself fall into a category which I thought this organization would never see again. I'm going to say this straight out of my mouth. I can't believe they gave Al Avila a undisclosed extension. Blows my mind. They need a clean house. They need to go through the main office and start removing some of these nerds that have no clue about the good old Eng the old good old game of baseball. The good old English D is too iconic, too great to even let fall to these standards. My apologies, I come so bold, but as they say, once a tiger, always a tiger. So I'm entitled to my own opinion, and I'm entitled to say whatever I want, whether people like it or not. <laughs> you know, for a second, I just I had to laugh there uh, with, with the, some of that stuff that Joe said, but or Joel said, but um, you know, I, I I really think he has a point here, um, especially coming from a former Detroit Tiger, a guy that you know wears the English D proud, is a Tiger through and through, a guy that really embraced the city and the team really kind of left it all left it out all on the line for the team. I can see his frustration right now. You know, I I can I I understand it because this is not what uh this is not what the rebuild was supposed to be. I'm really right now as a fan, I'm disappointed right now in this team. They have not shown any signs of improvement. 
Uh, they are 14 and 28 now uh, is their record on the season. And standings wise, 12 and a half games out of first place. Minnesota 27 and 16 at the time of this recording. Tigers are actually in Minnesota right now. Tigers are tied with the Royals uh, for last place in the Central Division. They are both uh, t- they're tied with the Royals for last uh, in the American League as well. Uh, only the Nationals, Reds, and Pirates have more losses than the Tigers. I know that, or I, I apologize. It, it is the Nationals. Nationals and the Reds now that have more losses than the Tigers. That's it. Uh, very, very disappointing. And when Miguel Cabrera is actually leading your team in basically every category, hits, he has 39, 16 RBIs leading the team in that. Uh, leading the team in batting average, 289. When he's leading the team in those categories, look, I think Miguel Cabrera is still a decent ball player. I don't think he's washed up and all that. He's he's not the same Miguel Cabrera, but he could still be a, a productive player. But when he's leading the team in all of those categories, I think it's a little scary because... You know, you think Austin Meadows, Javi Baez, you think of these bats that the Tigers got in the offseason. You think of the young guys on this team, Torkelson, among others. You think, hey, you know, they might start to be hitting especially seasoned ball players in Austin Meadows and, and Javi Baez. And I understand both of them were injured. I get it. But you expect more of an offensive production from them. It hasn't happened. I've been very, very patient with this Tigers team. Since 2017, when Al Avila got rid of all of those players, Justin Verlander, J.D. Martinez, his own son, Alex, Justin Wilson, Justin Upton, that whole year when he got rid of all those guys, his job was to get talent in return. It didn't necessarily have to be ready-made major league players. It wasn't guys that were playing every day. It was a bunch of prospects. Now, we all know prospects are hit or miss. We know that. But from this perspective, none of these guys have really panned out. None of these guys. I'm talking about four key trades from that season. The Justin Verlander deal to the Astros, Justin Wilson and Alex Avila to the Cubs, J.D. Martinez to the uh, Diamondbacks, Justin Upton to the Angels. Let's name you the players that they got in return for these guys. Verlander, the big one, uh, he ended up winning the World Series with the Astros that year. And after Tommy John's surgery is, might even be a better pitcher now than he was before his surgery. They got in return prospects, all prospects, Jake Rogers, catcher, Franklin Perez, pitcher, Daz Cameron, center fielder, Justin Wilson and Alex Avila, They got Candelario and Isaac Paredes in return. That's probably been the best trade of all of them. Candelario at least has started, been an everyday player the last four or five years. Paredes was a high prospect in the system before Paredes was traded for Austin Meadows to the Rays. Funny enough, Paredes actually started against the Tigers last week uh, when uh, he was playing for the Rays in Tropicana Field. And he hit two home runs in his start against the Tigers. How about that? He goes yard twice after barely doing anything with the Tigers. Interesting there. J.D. Martinez to the D-backs. They got Sergio Alcantara, Jose King, and Dowell Lugo in return. And the Justin Upton trade, Grayson Long and Elvin Rodriguez. How many of those guys are playing full-time in the majors right now? One, Candelario. 2017 is when this happened. I get the 2020 season was canceled, the minor leagues, and you know maybe they were a little bit behind in their development. I understand that. But it's been five seasons. And, and one of these guys is basically in the majors full time. The, the glaring one for me is that, is that Verlander trade. Jake Rogers, a defensive catcher 
who's barely done anything in Detroit. Franklin Perez, who has struggled with injuries. He he might even be out of baseball at this point. And Daz Cameron, who's had a, a, a couple of appearances with the Tigers, but that's about it. I think they're they're kind of sending Cam, Daz Cameron away and trying to make room for Riley Green whenever he gets healthy. That was supposed to be the biggest one. Look at what Cleveland has done. When they traded away Mike Clevenger to the Padres, what did they get in return? Naylor, a Josh Naylor, a Miles Straw, I believe maybe even Quan, Stephen Quan. They got about like half their starting. I was looking at the, I went to the game on, on Friday in Cleveland. And I'm looking at their lineup and I'm thinking, Half of these guys in the Cleveland lineup were just from that one trade with the Padres for Mike Clevenger. And all of a sudden, now, you know, a big-name player in Clevenger, you know, big-time player for Cleveland, he gets shipped off. They get a boatload in return. These guys are starting. These guys are major league players. They're actually having good seasons for Cleveland. What do all these guys have in common right now, besides Candelario? None of them are everyday major league players. These guys are, are still minor league players. It's been five seasons. Al Avila, it just seems like he has not been able to evaluate talent. The minor league system still hasn't... It's not like they're just plugging guys in in the system. I mean, the top 10 prospects right now in the Tigers organization, Riley Green... He'll be off this list once he gets healthy. Jackson Job, the number three overall pick from last season, who's a, a, still a baby, is an eighteen-year-old. Dylan Dingler, they're saying he's supposed to be the future catcher. He's number three. Christian Santana, a shortstop. Ty Madden, pitcher. Ryan Kreidler, a shortstop. Isaac Pacheco, third base. Dylan Smith, pitcher. Roberto Campos, he's their international free agent. They signed a few years ago. Outfielder. Gage Workman. Shortstop and third baseman. The ETA on these guys, most of these guys is anywhere between 2023 and 2025. Most of them 2024, 2025. There's no help on the way, except for maybe Riley Green right away, whenever he gets healthy, after taking a foul ball off his foot in spring training. There's not a lot of talent in the farm system right now. Torkelson's about to get sent down, I feel like, to Toledo. He had a home run the other day, but he struggled a lot more than just that. Guys, I've been patient. I have, but I think Joel's right. I think it's time to fire Al Avila. I do. Didn't understand how the, how Chris Illich gave him an extension back in, I think, 2019. Says they need to clean house. I, I really I really think they do. I, I just think, and I know the Tigers have really struggled hitting. I, I, I know they have. I don't think that's necessarily on A.J. Hinch. Maybe, they'll, maybe they fire the hitting coach. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But I still think A.J. Hinch is a, is a good manager. I still think he's great with in-game decisions and all that. Uh, I just think, you know, he needs to have more talent. Who's the guy that supplies the talent? Al Avila. I think once the Tigers get an actual general manager in that knows what he's doing, I think that's... that. I, think, I really think at this point it, it's that. And... I know people a few years ago wanted Al Avila fired. They wanted him fired as, as, as far back as I, I heard 2018, 2019, they wanted him fired. I was a little bit more patient. I said, let's wait to see how these guys turn out. I get they're young. I get Torkelson is young. I get Green's hurt. I understand. But they're 14 and 28. I, I mean, what? How, how low can we go here? Especially after a, a 78 win season last year. The expectation after that is 80 plus. Tigers are nowhere near that right now. The starting pitching's been decent. I mean, that's not the problem. I'm talking more hitters. The bullpen has, has been okay. 
I mean, obviously it could improve, but they're losing games like three to two, two zero. Like they're losing low scoring games because the offense can't do anything. I and I really think Alavila. I think maybe he he just emphasized pitching so much in this whole process. Remember getting Scubel, Manning, Casey Mize. He may have just emphasized it so much he just forgot about his hitters. I think Alv. I I really think it's time, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have to see if this team improves at all, but or or if Torkelson you know comes out of his shell. But I uh, I I really think it's time for Alavito to go, and uh, you know get get someone else in here. But that's my little Tigers rant. I think uh, Joel Zumaya uh, his comments are uh, appropriate though. I think um, I I really really think. Uh, you know, especially with a proud organization in the Tigers, having some legacy, having some tradition, they just haven't been able to, you know, keep up with that. And I think that's really disappointed. Um, you know, not only Joel Zomaya, but a, a lot of other former Tigers, you know, and obviously a lot of fans uh, as well. You know, I was thinking the other day, I really, really want to know what Jim Leland's thinking right now. Jim Leland, obviously not the manager of the Tigers anymore, but, you know, a guy that is still like a, a senior advisor. He's still in the building sometimes. I'd love to know what he thinks about some of these decisions that Al has made. Uh, because, of course, Dabro Dave Dabrowski was Leland's guy. And Dabrowski, as much as he didn't really, you know, he wasn't really about growing the farm system. It was mostly just throwing big money at these guys. And a lot of it had to do with, you know, the old man, Mike Illich. Uh, he was not afraid to throw money. And I think maybe Chris is a little different than his dad. But we'll have to see. I am. Uh, I'm really, really curious to see how this Tiger team ends up, and and if Chris Illich really does pull the plug on on Avila at some point, It'd be really, really interesting to see. That is for sure. Make sure to tune into to all the other great podcasts on the podcast network. The Fan Report talking about the Pistons and their lottery pick now, the fifth overall. The draft coming up in June. They're also playing in Paris. That was just announced the other day. They'll be playing in January. So exciting. A little foreign trip for uh, for some of the Detroit teams. Uh, the Michigan podcast uh, taking a little bit of a break in the summer, but they do have uh, they'll do have some podcasts every once in a while. In the, in the in the summer months and of course doc and jock and the wrestling podcast always always great as well and follow john macroom's great content uh, that he puts out on uh, sports illustrated does a great job him and Vito and adam and, and all of them over there uh, at, uh, at w with sports illustrated lions uh, doing a great job as we get closer to training camp starting in august and uh, before you know it uh, the lions will be back in action uh, just before yeah, before we all know it and baseball will be over and all that so uh, really exciting times here for sure. Thank you again, folks, for tuning in. And make sure to tune in next week for a special announcement only on Open Mic Night.